I would really like for this to stop. Hi, my name is Sydney, welcome back to hell. And as per usual, before we launch in, today's video is sponsored by Fume. Now, I am personally of the opinion that social media has actually brought us a lot of really good things. And as a person who has been around since the early days of MySpace and even Facebook, because I guess I'm old now, I know that there are benefits as far as connecting and offending people with your blog posts. Other emo millennials will understand. But today's social media platforms have almost given people license to do and say things both online and also out in public that not too long ago would probably have gotten them sucked in the face. And believe it or not, it seems like there was once a period of time where most people, most being the operative word, kept their annoying behavior behavior on the internet. But today, with the advent of TikTok and Reels and Shorts and so on and so forth, people will go out into public with that annoying behavior and film themselves harassing other people. You the sensei? I am the sensei. I'm here to challenge you for your dojo. <laughs> no, you're not gonna challenge nobody. I'm gonna challenge you for your dojo. No, you're not gonna challenge anyone, bro. Are you serious? You know who I am? Do a YouTube video. I don't give a f Well, put it on YouTube. You probably never ever f***ing trained before. Nah, so yeah. I, I trained for Le Mignon. I hope this video gave him that delicious dopamine rush he was looking for. I am also willing to bet that a majority of you have probably come across the videos of people, particularly in the gym, getting mad at other people for walking in their shots or looking at them. How to not approach girls at the gym? I hate this, I hate this, I hate when I say it makes me so uncomfortable. Feral, 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 like fucking feral. There's mirrors everywhere, so it's like you can easily ca catch people. Oh, this is nothing. Okay, we're gonna move on to the 35s now. I want you to watch very carefully. But just recently, I happened upon a video that was going viral on TikTok. And it is yet another iteration of someone doing something annoying in public for views. It was posted by an account called Addicted to Anna and shows this woman, Anna, presumably, dancing while being handed a plate of pancakes at IHOP. In the background, another woman makes a face as all of this transpires. Anna captioned this piece of content, the best part of this video is the woman judging me. She then went on to repost the video exclusively focusing on the woman behind her and zooming in on her reaction. I suppose this is meant to be some sort of relatable moment, but really all it achieves is putting a complete stranger on blast to millions of people. As of filming this video, Anna's two pieces of content have a collective 60 million views, and that doesn't even count the reposts all over YouTube and Instagram. Now, I think it is perfectly reasonable to scrunch your face up at someone who is doing something bizarre around you. Like, like, just to be clear, I find background lady much more relatable than dancing pancake lady. Like, I just want to eat my pancakes and feel guilty in peace, okay? I don't need you with the K-pop in the background. And it's also worth remembering that most of the time, these video creators are playing music out loud in order for them to lip sync or dance. Not to mention, these people probably play the music on repeat until they get the shot they want. And just to remind you guys, to the influencers, it is the people in the background making the faces who are the weird ones. Now, of course, this Anna situation is not an isolated one. In fact, if you spend any length of time on social media at all, you have probably seen these kinds of videos over and over again, where the content creator or attention-starved teenager either acts ridiculous in public for views or highlights strangers and makes them the focus of the video, even if that stranger is doing something completely innocuous. And that brings us to what I want to talk about today, the absolute plague that is main character syndrome and the illness that is modern content creation. But of course, before you once again board my hell gondola and together we question all that we know and all that we love because the internet may have been a mistake. Let's hear from today's sponsor, Fume. Do you have a bad habit? Is it bothering your loved ones? Blech. 
They've told you they hate it. It's true. I hate it. Even you kind of hate it. I also kind of hate it. And frankly, between the rising cost of goods and the moodiness you experience when you try to break your bad habit, it's not a good time. But it doesn't have to be like that, thanks to Foom. Foom is this nifty little flavored air device designed to break any hand-to-mouth habit. And because foam is not a vape, it has no heating components, meaning that you aren't inhaling any icky chemicals. Instead, foam uses these neato little cores that come in all sorts of yummo flavors. Your foam also comes with movable components to keep your fingers occupied and relieve anxiety, like an adjustable airflow dial and magnets. This helps you not to scream inside. And remember those yummo flavors I mentioned? Foom has several for you to try, such as crisp mint and white cream cranberry, but it also has three new flavors, sparkling grapefruit, orange vanilla, and raspberry lemon. You just pop your preferred core into your foom and you're good to go. So if you too want a yummy way to stop your bad habit, then click the link in the description or go to tryfoom.com sydney or scan the QR code on screen. And of course, don't forget to use code sydney for 10% off when you try a journey pack. In October 2023, HuffPost UK published an article titled How to Do the Tube Girl Trend Respectfully According to an Etiquette Expert. The tube girl trend refers to a style of video popularized by a woman called Sabrina Bassoon, who went viral in August 2023 for filming herself dancing on the London Underground, also known as the tube. Since then, the tube girl trend has picked up enormous steam, with countless other people mimicking the video's original format on all sorts of public transport. Some have even posted videos attempting the trend, but noting that they don't yet have the confidence to bust out dancing in front of total strangers. Knowing how popular this form of content is, the HuffPost article in question tried to give instruction on how to do it without harassing other passengers. It gives suggestions such as filming when minimal people are present and recording a whole video in silence and adding music later, rather than playing music out loud as many content creators do. The article also notes that if you have the misfortune of being around while someone is filming themselves but it doesn't directly impact you, it's best to live and let live. I don't think I want to agree to those terms, ever. Now to some of us needing actual instructions on how not to bother other people might seem utterly insane. Especially because it's been long understood that if you play music out loud from your phone on public transport, someone somewhere will wanna give you a dirt nap. But today, people all over the place really and truly genuinely believe that they are in fact the most important person in their own stories. And it's imperative that they go out into the world to make sure everyone knows it, even going as far as to use completely innocent bystanders as props in their main character storylines. As far as official definitions go, main character syndrome doesn't actually exist as a diagnosable mental illness, although it probably should. It's more the manifest manifestation of hyper-individualism meeting the desire for online attention and the disregard of others. Main character syndrome has become part of internet vocabulary to essentially describe situations where people think of themselves as the protagonist in the feature film that is their everyday lives. You know, if the feature film was about faking a personality disorder and wanting daddy to hug you just once. I mean daddy as in male parent, not daddy. <laughs> I hate myself. An article published in The New Yorker says that the term can be used appreciatively, acknowledging a form of self-care, putting yourself first. Well, that's certainly one way of putting it. Or it can be used as an accusation, a calling out of narcissism. A person dressing too extravagantly for a casual event, for example, is trying to be the main character. Now, the latter part of that comment might seem kind of silly, but no, people are really out here trying to wear white dresses to their blind cousin's wedding because their favorite color is white and it looks good on their skin. <sighs> The New Yorker article goes on to quote a 24-year-old TikToker who said, TikTok and social media has made it more attainable for you to write your own story. You can kind of cast yourself in these mini movies. And it really seems like people are doing just that. Whether it's taking a photo shirtless in the Louvre or filming themselves in a library and pretending that they're in a romantic comedy. To be clear here, I do not have a single problem with people doing things that are enjoyable and fulfilling. 
These are basic and normal tenets of the human experience and extend to all sorts of things like travel and relationships and raves. Raves? Where I do draw the line is when overt self-centeredness begins to affect others. And today we see this play out in a couple of different ways. The first being influencers, creators, TikTokers, whatever, making random people unwilling participants in their content. Now, we all have at one point or another probably ended up in the background of someone else's video or photo. And in a way, this is part and parcel of being in public spaces in a time where people want to document absolutely everything. What's funny is that when I was growing up, there was a whole emphasis on photobombing. This is where someone would deliberately run into someone else's video or photo, often without the person knowing, and assert themselves forever into that moment. Things were quite different when I was a teenager. Gotta remember, we didn't have iPhones until I was like, 15 or something. I just, I just aged myself, didn't I? You didn't just age yourself, you aged us all. Photobombing was received both negatively and positively. Sometimes negatively because it was inconsiderate and rude, but sometimes positively because it made for hilarious, meaningful moments and the people taking the original photo or video were a good sport about it. Today, we almost see the reverse of this where the people filming want strangers in their videos so that they can harass and annoy them for clicks. You guys, you guys know who I am? All right, cool, well, take care. Or so they can use their completely innocuous reactions to make a point. We see this a lot when people are doing things that are out of the ordinary, as in the case of Addicted to Anna, or this guy who is acting silly outside a restaurant and highlighting the reactions of diners. My guy, these people just wanna eat their pastas without your bullshit. But there is also this really silly trend where people will have someone else film them walking down the street. They will then zoom repeatedly in on the reactions of strangers. And most of the time, these strangers are giving them a cursory glance. Now, I've seen both men and women participate in this style of video, but what makes it so bizarre is the implication that they're so attractive that people can't help but look. When I think the reality is considerably more simplistic, people look at other people people, and they especially look at other people when they are forcing their way through a crowd with a camera person behind them. They're not looking at you because you're captivating or beautiful, well, maybe they are, who's to say? They're looking at you because you're acting strange out in public. Something that I hate so much about this is that people now have to be acutely aware of what their face is doing all the time, lest they be on the receiving end of some influencer's content. And I think all of this is wrong for a multitude of reasons, but one of the most upsetting is that if somebody doesn't react appropriately in the background of a video and the influencer or TikToker or whoever decides to single that person out, the internet often can react very badly to these situations and that person who did something quite innocently is now on the receiving end of a tremendous amount of hate and abuse. Content creators, and I use that term quite loosely, might be completely comfortable with this level of scrutiny and public attention, but lots and lots and lots of people absolutely are not. So it stands to reason that putting your average person on blast to thousands, if not millions of people, is unacceptable. And the ironic thing, and I guess this brings me to my second point, is that when these influencers aren't using people as their own personal props, they're using public spaces as their own personal movie sets where other people are not allowed to exist. And in my travels of the internet, I found so many examples of this and each one made me more and more angry. I'm talking about, for example, this clip of a woman who is trying to film herself in front of the Eiffel Tower while it sparkles but she is actively stopping other people from walking anywhere near her as if she owns this space. And like, you know, guys, I'm not a monster. I can understand wanting to get a cool shot like this, but you're also sharing this environment with others. And if you wanted to ensure that nobody else could walk anywhere near you, then you should have been wearing high vis and put witches hats all over the ground. Witches hats are what we call these things in Australia. I think everywhere else they're called road cones or, or, or just cones. 
I don't know. Do not bully me. One of the places where this actually takes place the most is the gym. People set up their camera or multiple cameras and film their workouts for social media and also get unbelievably mad when other people walk into frame. Weirdly enough, this also applies to locker rooms and change rooms where influencers will still set up their cameras and film even with other people walking around in the background, clothed or not. Which I'm pretty sure is illegal. I'm sorry to say, but you can't put Mr. Smith's man parts on the internet, even if you think your muscles look good in the video. <laughs> So little progress. Cool. Yeah, I understand. You're recording right now? Yes. I don't want to be in your recording. I don't care. You touch me, watch what happens. I'm actually very happy to report that my gym bans people from filming in the gym or basically anywhere in that general vicinity, which is great for someone like me because I don't wanna end up in the background of your video while I'm melting over in the corner. Absolutely nobody wants to see that. But all that aside, there is honestly so much entitlement and lack of self-awareness in these situations that is incredibly disheartening. And the cherry on top of this terrible cake is the fact that these gym influencers who you would think are recording themselves in the gym to post on social media to encourage other people to use the gym are in fact the ones making the gym an unpleasant place to be. This goes for the women filming other male gym goers to say that they're looking at them and being creepy when they're definitely not, for the people who film other people in the gym to make fun of them on social media, and just the people who go into the gym with a general lack of self-awareness and make other people very uncomfortable by filming themselves and making the gym not a very encouraging or welcoming place. If you do these things, you are 100% the problem. And eventually Joey Swole will find you. Some of you will definitely not know who that is, and if you don't, I encourage you to go and look up Joey Swole because he's one of the only people who uses his platform to call out bad gym etiquette, and we thank him for that. Anyway, all of that brings me to probably the worst part of this main character syndrome slash influencer apocalypse phenomenon, and that is the general disregard for others. One video that I found particularly enraging showed a guy filming himself sitting between a couple who are looking at the Eiffel Tower. He then reaches over and takes a handful of ice cream from this young man's cone, which he then eats. Now, I don't know if the couple was in on this and it's a setup, which is sometimes the case, but assuming that it isn't, this behavior is absolutely not okay. And yet social media has made it seem like it is. In this effort to be more and more extreme, in the greater effort to get more and more attention, we have effectively removed the guardrails on what is appropriate behavior out in public. Like showing up to class with a typewriter instead of a laptop and then loudly typing and dinging, disrupting other students. Or screaming at strangers and joking about how nobody cares what you do in public. Cares. Guys, I am just laying here. I'm literally in so many people's way. <laughs> this video even shows a woman shoving a complete stranger because he stood in her shot. I would bet anything this is the type of person who goes on the internet and talks about consent. Like completely ready to tell you how Snow White being kissed by the prince wasn't consensual. But really, ma'am, how self-absorbed do you actually have to be to believe that you are entitled to push another person away because he stood in front of your camera? Now again, I'm willing to bet that to some people, this behavior is, yes, inappropriate, but it isn't dangerous. Dangerous, except when it is. Because sometimes this general disregard and disrespect for others mixed with the desperation for social media interaction and likes and clicks and so on can turn into genuinely illegal activity that can traumatize others. In May 2023, a UK TikToker called Mizzy was taken into custody by police after he filmed himself breaking into people's homes, stealing someone's dog, and even threatening to harm women. All of these situations were passed off as pranks, but for the people on the receiving end of them, they are anything but. 
And that's one of the worst components about this discussion. These influencers genuinely seem to view their actions as innocent and innocuous. They're just having a laugh, having some fun. But the reality is that they're going out of their way to harass complete strangers. At best, this completely disrupts the day of the person on the receiving end, and at worst, they end up traumatized or even hurt. But thankfully, some of these online media personalities are finally starting to experience meaningful consequences for their behavior, especially in the case of several content creators who recently gained widespread attention for harassing people in Japan. One individual called Johnny Somali filmed himself on public transport, making fun of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and even playing unsavory music out loud to try to provoke a reaction from other passengers. An Australian man with a TikTok called Shearing Shed Vlogs filmed himself walking through a women-only train carriage, making remarks that some people perceived as very inappropriate. And a YouTuber, Phidias or Phidias, I, I don't know how he pronounces this, has been documenting himself breaking the law all over the country. In several videos, he tells his audience how to get away with riding the train in Japan for free, and he shows himself escaping ticket inspectors and even entering a hotel and pretending pretending to be a guest in order to get a free breakfast. Now, to some of you, this might not seem like that big of a deal. After all, everybody loves a free breakfast. But what underpins this behavior, and I think this is important to note, is that these people are aware of the fact that Japan has very different cultural customs and traditions than the countries they come from. And one of the biggest things about Japan, assumed by many people around the world, is that the Japanese are considerably more polite and less confrontational than, say, an American would be. What this means is that these people are going out of their way to take advantage of the fact that Japan is a reasonably polite country and its citizens will not react the same way as, again, say, an American might. I don't like it. I'm not, I'm not a great fan of this. The saving grace here is that you can only push people so far. And like I mentioned, the consequences for this behavior have come at these three people pretty hard and fast. Johnny Somali is now being attacked when people see him out on the street, and not only by Japanese people, but also by Westerners. Shearing Shed Vlogs was asked to leave Japan, and Phidias has issued an apology for his antics in the country. But all of this boils down to a general indifference to making other people uncomfortable, and a strong desire to be as extreme as possible for likes and clicks and interaction on social media. Ultimately, wanting to be the main character in your own life is not a bad thing. And honestly, after the last several years of isolation and lockdown and what have you, it makes sense why young people in particular are using social media to romanticize their lives. But for as many benefits as social media has brought us, soulless friendship information, it has also brought us a ton of negative consequences, a lot of which stem from the increasingly blurred lines of good attention and bad attention. And simply getting more attention has become the end goal. And where as much attention as possible is the desired result, terrible behavior is then incentivized. And unfortunately, it will continue to be incentivized so long as this kind of content and these kind of actions translate into more views and more social media growth. In the end, there is absolutely nothing wrong with wanting to document your life or wanting it to be more meaningful or more impactful. There is something wrong, however, with crossing all sorts of boundaries in order to do that. Now, before I open the floor to all of you, this is just a reminder to check out Foom using the link in the description or scanning the QR code on screen. When you do and you use code SYDNEY, you can get 10% off a journey pack. Now, I open the floor to all of you. What do you all think? What do you make of this crazy influencer apocalypse? What do you think of the concept of main character syndrome and how this has become such a popular thing on TikTok with reels and shorts and whatnot? Do you think it's a good thing? Do you think it's a bad thing? Do you think this is a net negative overall for society? And what do you generally make of this issue overall? As always, if you have made it this far in the video, I am so glad. I always like having you guys here right to the end. If you are not subscribed already and you would like to see more of me and more of this kind of content, feel free to do so. Also leave me a like if you so desire. And of course, feel free to leave me a comment telling me your thoughts and opinions because I do read the majority of those and I always like hearing from you guys. And as always, I will see you pretty people in the next video.